This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Stefan Belafonte. Stefan, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Nice to be here. Nice to have you on. Um, a lot of accusations made over the years. Ex-wife yes. with Scary Spice from the Spice Girls, Mel B. Um, this is, you've never really spoke out, but like I say, a lot of accusations, married for 10 years. And uh, why has it took you so long to kind of have your say? I know you're going through a defamation lawsuit now for $5 million. Um but you know yourself, when the media get a hold of stories, all the interviews, the books written, it doesn't look good. Yeah. Um, so why so long to then come forward? Uh, you know, listen, I had to focus on my daughter, and that was the most important thing for me. You know, I have primary custody of my daughter. Um, you know, I, a lot of parents tell their kids, uh, you know, listen, I'll take a bullet for you. Well, I wasn't taking lead bullets, I was taking verbal bullets. So while my ex-wife was going and kind of making a career out of this story that she fabricated about this abusive, horrible marriage that she had for 10 years, I was focused more on making sure that I had, uh, you know, custody of my daughter. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Kids first, family first, but that's it. before we get into everything though, I always like to go back to the start with my guests, get more a bit of an understanding about you, where you grew up and how it all began. Um, I grew up between New York, New Jersey, and uh, Virginia. When I was very young, I was in Virginia. Moved to New Jersey for a couple of years, and then moved to New York. I fucking love New York. Uh, yeah, I, when I lived in New York, it was a uh, it, crazy. Well, well, it's getting back to where it was way back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not I was job. in New York, November, February. I just love the people. I love the vibe about it. Obviously, if you're there, maybe it gets boring after a while. But I just love everything about it. I love the. There's just a passion about it. And plus, for the Americans, I always say this, but they seem to open more doors for you than the people in the UK. Oh, I just think America in general is a very good place to kind of, you know, come from nothing and try to make something happen. Um, and New York's an amazing, special place. Yeah, you're right. There's an energy in New York yeah. that's not in like a lot of other places. What were you like at school? Uh, what was I like? I was I was a class clown. I uh, I, I loved having a laugh. Um, people pleaser not necessarily uh, more of a goofball getting in trouble class clown yeah I was the same man always yeah. getting in trouble trying to please everybody else but at my own expense I don't even know if I was trying to please everyone else I just wanted to be funny and I don't know goofy and uh, I don't know I mean I guess if you really look at it and you think where you're trying to please them I don't know because I would even do it when people weren't around I don't know I just <laughs> I how goofy. was parents how was your upbringing family um, my, my seven brothers and sisters um, my, 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 my mom, my mother and I have a really close relationship. Um, I don't really have a relationship with my dad. Um, my brothers and sisters were, you know, we get along well. I, I have a, a brother that I don't really talk to as well, but. How's that? Um, 
You know, I I think that people sometimes are uh, have the impression that uh, blood is thicker than water, and according to statistics, um, you're more likely to be hurt or killed or screwed over by a family member than a stranger. So for me, I don't. I look at it like I look at it if I were to meet someone and have a friend or whatever. If they're not good for my life at this point, I just I just stay away from them. I don't have a I don't necessarily hate them. I just don't want to deal with them. What about your dad? Did you ever reach out? Did you ever meet him? Yeah, no, no, no. I knew my dad. My dad was just very, um, I had a really abusive, really crazy dad. My dad was, he just, he didn't get it. He didn't, he didn't understand. You know, he came from, I think, 18 brothers and sisters. You know, we grew up really, really poor. Um, He just, he was, he was just a person who just kind of didn't get it. He didn't understand the value of like what being a dad was. So that's kind of where I've always tried to be that much more of a dad. Do you think it affects? Because everybody I have on kind of come from the sort of broken home, the abusive father, and it kind of, anyway in life is always two options. You either fucking go off the rails or yeah. you try and do something with your life and, and use all that pain as a kind of, success kind of journey but do you feel as if it affects you growing up not having that father figure or was your mum playing both sides like masculine and feminine kind of energy um i don't know if i mean listen i think everything affects you in life uh that you go through um i mean some people are more resilient than others some people uh you know small things can affect them i had a lot of things um i'm sure they affected me um but my mom was um my mom was like, uh, she's, she showed me what hard work was. You know, my mom was a very, very hard worker, pulled it together, just showed me that like, you know, sometimes you, like it goes, like shit goes down and you just gotta be there. You gotta, you gotta make it happen. You gotta yeah. persevere, so. What did you do after school? Um, my buddies and I, uh, we, we, we took a car. I left from New York and I went to um, California and I met a guy and we put together um, a company called College Music Video. Um, and I kind of got right into the business. I you know, started shooting shows. Um, from that, I started making, uh, you know, shooting music videos and doing music videos. And then from that, I went and I started running a, a division for this guy, Damon John, who's on Shark Tank. Um, went through the training program at ICM and just started getting into the business, making movies and doing things, entrepreneur. What was your first show? Uh, the, I, we created a whole TV series for College Entertainment Network. It was, um, we, I was interviewing people and doing uh, stuff on like red carpets and stuff. That was like the first thing I was looking at it the other day. I was quite young, 19, 19 years old. So 18. Yeah, there's no um, life experience then in there. Uh, Fair play for then making the jump because it is scary. People try to do things on their own. It's scary trying to make things happen, especially in America. Yeah, I mean, um, I always looked at it like, listen, um, I had, a, I, I, there was a, there was a, there was a guy that was a homeless guy, and he kind of changed my mindset around like nineteen twenty. He, he gave me something that really made me think about life a little different. You know, he had. I had asked him for a cigarette or whatever. And the guy was like, nah, it's just my last cigarette. And I was like, oh man, my life sucks. Like I was going through something at that time or whatever. And he said, son, you've won the lottery and you don't even know it. And I said, the lottery, what are you talking about? And he said, you know, um, so he gave me the whole rundown and the rundown is kind of as such like uh, to give it back to you, to regurgitate it. It's like, um, you know, Everybody in this world has a father, right? No matter if he's alive, dead, you know him, he was in your life or not, everyone has a father. So let's just take my father for an example. So let's say when my dad was maybe, I don't know, 14, 15 years old, he probably jerked off a lot like every young man does. And then he probably started hooking up with a couple chicks here and there. And then uh, he met my mother and I was born. From the time that he was jerking off to the time that he met my mother, a hundred trillion of my would-be brothers and sisters died on a bedsheet, a condom, wherever, 
and I was born. Do you know what that means? It means I'm luckier than every lottery since the beginning of the lottery in every country and city state the lottery exists in. It means I'm one in 100 trillion gazillion billion to one to be on this earth. It means I won the lottery. So the whole point is, is that you have a lottery ticket. Like you said before about how maybe I was being a class clown to please people or whatever. Um, at that point, when I understood about my, my lottery ticket, I was very cognizant or aware that I couldn't give my lottery ticket away like that. Cause I had a lot of friends at that point getting in a lot of trouble and doing things or whatever. So uh, my mindset was like, I could do anything because I deserve it because um, it's part of my lottery ticket. So working and creating stuff and doing things, um, it all kind of made sense to me. I don't know. Were you loving that, that lifestyle back then? I, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Amazing. It was, um, lifestyle, was when you're young you're carefree you don't you don't, you don't you don't have as many you're not so self-aware of things or whatever um so yeah. even if you're losing and you're you know you're going through a hard time or whatever i miss that see my late teens and early 20s 20s i fucking loved life i laughed well obviously i took a lot of drink alcohol and drugs back then yeah. but what a fucking ball i was i ended up becoming a mess with all the drinking drugs but Thankfully, I'm I'm good now, but wild times, man. I fucking loved it because I don't know if it was alcohol or the drugs that made us feel that I had no problems because it kind of suppresses your yeah, feelings yeah, yeah. and emotions. But I laughed a lot more in my 20s. And then you become a sort of professional and more responsibilities. You kind of fucking laughter gets took away. And sometimes it's good to have that fuck it button. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I never lost my sense of humor, I think. I mean, I, I'm still more of a, you know, my friend's, I know from back then, I'm like, yo, bro, you're still like a goofy. I like to laugh, have fun. Um, you know, I, I went through my uh, my drug phase early on. Um, you know, I, I didn't really get caught too much into it. I did have a what I call a good run because, um, you know, I didn't get too, too caught up in it. There wasn't fentanyl at the time. You know, um, it wasn't super crazy hard drugs, you know, um, but... Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're carefree back then, you know, yeah. and like, uh, I, I think drugs were, I, I don't, maybe it's just the time that I was growing up. I don't think they were as crazy as the drugs that are right now. I mean, no, back then you just get cocaine, a few ecstasy. Yeah, maybe yeah. ecstasy or some weed or something or whatever. Yeah. But now, I mean, you have, the, I, when I was growing up, we didn't have like crystal meth and I mean, heroin was around, but I guess I wasn't around people that were using heroin or whatever. I don't know. So. Yeah, the world's upside down with drugs now, and it's sad, especially with fentanyl. It's here in the UK, but not as big as America. Um, it's the prescription drugs that's killing everyone yeah, in America. It's the biggest industry in the world, pharmaceutical yeah. industry, um, and that's sad to see. So you started living life. What was, because you were married, at, what age did you get married first time? I didn't get married. Have you only been married once? Yeah, one time, yeah. So going through life in your 20s, successful, life's going good? Uh, I going it's going i mean you know it wasn't bad it wasn't good i mean you know i bought a place in um in los angeles um i was doing really well as a matter of fact i mean uh, the movie i just done at the time uh got nominated for a golden globe which is quite amazing and uh bad lieutenant with nick cage was doing phenomenally well yeah so i mean the movie stuff was doing really well and i had uh you know some other little business stuff that i was doing how's nicholas cage Really cool guy, cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to love Cornia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a cool guy. He's got a good quirkiness to him. Did you ever feel fulfilled? I, yeah, I mean, I feel fulfilled a lot. I mean, I I'm not necessarily searching for everything. You know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not like on this. I like fishing. Like, give me a fishing rod. Let me go fish. I love cooking. Like, you know, I'm not. I, I think back then, um, no, back then I wasn't. I was you know, you're young. You're looking for the you know it's the, the you know, you're looking for you, you're, you're trying to climb to the top of the mountain you know you want to you want to go places you want to you want to see things or whatever you know is it ruthless early life is kind of industry. ruthless like that yeah. i mean any industry you want to be in the banking industry you know the entertainment industry life in, in in general can be quite uh you know um my my mom would give me really good pointers in life about like um you know about like you know I had, when I was little, I had, um, my mom had like a couple jobs and I had to look after my brothers and sisters and I created my own little uh, cleaning ovens and taking garbage out and stuff or whatever. And 
I, my business was was going pretty good, and then I got a little paper route and this. I've always been like a hard worker, and my mom would always say like, "You can be such a hard worker that you make yourself invaluable that people need you around or whatever." So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I uh, yeah, I was I was always like you know doing hard work or you know making things. So I wasn't not necessarily I was fulfilled, but I was going toward dreams. What, yeah, or to make you think, you know what, listen, I'm a junior high dropout. I dropped out of junior high. Whenever I would be able to make anything happen, I felt fulfilled because I, the way I was looking at it, there was a lot of people in life that I've met that have tried to do a couple different things, you know what I mean, and, and weren't as successful. So I would feel successful even if I did like, the you know. Yeah, the was, smallest thing. Yeah, the smallest thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So the relationship then with Mel B, um, massive name in industry as well, one of the biggest girl bands of all time. Ten years married, beautiful daughter, came toxic. What was seven years later, we're still kind of in the midst of it. How did you meet? Um, we'd met a couple different times around. Um, remembering, we met like I think on like a video set or something or whatever. And then we met around, I mean, you know, Mel wasn't, when I met Mel, Mel wasn't Scary Spice. She wasn't like, um, she was far removed from that. I mean, she's always going to be a Spice Girl, but she was kind of like just hanging out, being chill. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think she was doing, as I recollect when I met her, she wasn't doing music back then. Um, she was, the time I met her, she was dating a girl. She had been in like a long relationship with this girl named Christine when I first originally met her um was like her girlfriend for years oh so she was in a relationship before you you met when you were yeah, yeah 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 and when did you who made the first move um i guess we just kind of had like a really cool fun time together like you know we got on really well we we took a um like an rv which is like a recreational vehicle we took it down to sedona uh which is like a really cool vibey place um and you know, Mel had, um, I think w when I was hanging out with her, I got to see Mel's like um, personality. And I always thought like, you know, the, the the music and all the other things that she was trying weren't really necessarily working. But Mel had like a really interesting, um, uh, uh, quirky, just very witty personality. And we got on from that. Like, I thought it was like just fun and cool. She was easy to be around. Yeah, because that's the thing with relationships. If you're getting married and spending 10 years with someone, there's got to be an element of love there in happy times. Obviously, when the shit hits the fan and all the stuff then gets put in the press and then people raise alarms and then it's question marks everywhere. But at a time, it must have been love. It must have been, okay, I love this person to then want to have a kid with them, want to get married with them. Was it both you and just a, was it a healthy relationship at the start? Yeah, I mean, listen, we had a we had a fun, like I said, it was like a natural, fun, cool vibe it wasn't like anything um you know we we had gotten married and no one knew about it for like a year we were just chilling and you know just having fun and and um yeah we just had a good little vibe you know it wasn't too it wasn't too super crazy like oh, i love you every second it wasn't this it was like it was like a good fun vibe it was like even kill when was the first was there any telltale signs of any sort of mental abuse or physical abuse from anyone at that time no we never had any of that stuff we we had a regular relationship all the way through i mean so l listen people have to remember this mel wasn't a sequestered like like downtrodden woman who like lived in a small apartment in a like mel was a person who traveled around the world stayed around the world was hanging doing like you know it's i don't know i think that it's very, um, pe people haven't really watched the, 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 the whole thing from the beginning. So they get small bits and parts, but we didn't have like a, a crazy bad, we had a fun, goofy, good relationship. We didn't have like a, we weren't in like 50 different fights and stuff. Yeah, because obviously the media portray that now. Um, and if I'm honest, it's all one-sided against you. With all the interviews Mel's done, the book that she's done, it doesn't look good. Um, but... Like I say, I'm here to give anybody a fair platform to have things from their side because it's important. You look at the Johnny Depp scenario, and I'm not saying your relationship was like that, yeah, yeah, but yeah. 
when the press released all the stuff about Johnny Depp, everybody portrayed the guy as a monster. And then you look at it and you think, well, wait a minute, it doesn't look quite right. So I think uh, there's always three sides to the tale, both sides, and then there's the truth. Yeah. But everybody deserves a fair chance and a fair space to tell things from their side. Well, listen, so I think this is a this is a really important thing for people to understand, right? So and this is a very complex thing because you got to understand Mel's a celebrity to people, especially in the UK, that they've grown up on. Like they, they, this is somebody who probably may have helped someone, you know, when they were sad or depressed or happy, or this is the song at their wedding, or it jogs things. So, me, I'm, I, I'm just a regular nobody guy. So, there's people that love Melanie, right, or think that they love Melanie, or they relate to Melanie, and they are obviously going to be very judgmental because that's their that's their superhero that's the person that they look up to and on top of that most people haven't followed this um this trial from the get-go every day it's been a very long moving um when i say trial or the the, the things that have been happening within our divorce or whatever so an example is you know when when this happened so first of all, so Melanie and I were, um, we were having an amiable cool divorce, right? All of our text messages, emails, we're not fighting. There's video of like all of this stuff, right? There's no problems. All of a sudden a guy, Larry Backman and Susan Weisner come in and they're Larry Backman is kind of like a, a lawyer. You can look him up. Who's been almost disbarred at this point. He's been definitely reprimanded about doing like really horrible things as a lawyer. And he gets into Melanie's head and he says, listen, we can get Stefan gone. We can get him out of there. You got to remember Jimmy, Melanie's first husband, um, I guess there were some allegations that he was abusive and bad or whatever. And Melanie was able to get full custody. And then the same thing with Eddie Murphy, Melanie went in, I guess, with Gloria Allred, said a bunch of stuff. Eddie didn't want to deal with it and just said, listen, you can have full custody and walked away from it. I was the person who was going to go and fight for my daughter. So when I started saying, listen, I, you just can't take my daughter from me. Um, Melanie, her team came out and I was at my restaurant and this is where all this stuff happened to give you an example. So Melanie and I are talking, hanging out. We've already said we're getting a divorce. There is no problems. I'm at my restaurant, it's late at night, uh, it's around like 10 o'clock at night or whatever, and someone keeps calling the restaurant. So when they call the restaurant, um, uh, after like the third try, I, my, the person that works for me, I pick up the phone, I hear a guy on the phone that sounds like, <sighs> and then hangs up. And I'm like, huh, that was a bit weird. So maybe like two minutes after that, I get a, um, a, a text from, uh, what's the, the play, um, uh, I'll tell you, it's a, it's an alarm company. Anyway, I get a text from them. I call in real quick and they say, listen, Stefan, you have uh, uh, like six or seven people walking around your house. So I'm like, what? So the restaurant is about maybe a two and a half, three minute drive up the street. I jump in my car. I fly up the street. As I get around the corner, I see a bunch of black vans and trucks and this and that. I get out the car, guns on me. TMZ, you can watch the clip on TMZ. Uh, TMZ happened to be there, obviously. Um, and they're like, uh, we have a warrant to search your house for guns, um, drugs, uh, sex trafficking, a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Now, at the time, I'm like thinking, I'm going to sue you. You're at the wrong house. You, you, you probably mean to be at the person's house down the street that has the all-night parties. So I wasn't under arrest, but they uh, said that I had to come in there some paperwork or whatever. So I left. I came back the next day. And when I came back, the first thing I did was I looked on the camera and my ex-wife was the one letting him in. And I was like, what is going on? So um, I couldn't reach her. Number was disconnected. And then right after that, all the allegation things started coming out. It was like, I was beaten. I was this, I was that. So this is something very, very, very important for everyone in the world to understand timeline right timeline is very important so when melanie first came out with her allegations and she met with the atf 
She met with the FBI. She met with the local police. She met with the district attorney. Melanie's allegations, so let's start from zero and see where we're at now. Melanie said that I chained her to a toilet with a chain around her neck. Melanie said I beat her, anally raped her, vaginally and anally over 156 times. Melanie said that I built bunkers that were physical bunkers in this world that I had women chained up in and I was a sex trafficker. Melanie said that I um, uh, was a, uh, into the porno business. I was making porn and I was a porn distributor and person who filmed porn. Melanie said uh, a million different things that I beat her every day mercis, merc, mercifully, um, mercilessly. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> but um, you know, um, said all of these things. Cut to right now. Melanie has transitioned her story 30 different times throughout. And what happened is, is that Melanie looks back after time goes by and she has to correct her lies. So everything that Melanie does now is trying to correct her lies because what happened was Melanie didn't know that I had taken the phones to, so let me back up again. Melanie had accused me of sex trafficking and part of that accusation, the ATF and police and stuff seized all of my computers and phones and everything um, to check them to see obviously if these allegations were correct. While they were doing their investigation, um, I had uh, some old phones and took those phones to a forensic metadata person who pulled all of the text messages, emails, um, videos, pictures, and did um, a forensic metadata validation showing that I didn't like go in there and edit stuff or move things around or whatever. Um, when Melanie found out those things completely, completely showed that she lied, Melanie panicked and went, oh my God. Now you have to remember at this time I'm ruined. Everyone in the world thinks I'm the biggest scumbag in the world. I have 0% custody of my daughter. I'm not allowed in our marital house. I have a TRO, which is a temporary restraining order against me. And Melanie, when I got kicked out of the house, or when this happened, when we broke up, Melanie went and took all of the money out of the bank accounts, okay? I was screwed. I was broke. I was pretty much living in my car. I couldn't use the credit cards. Melanie had ran those up. I had everyone in the world believing that I had beaten, raped, and done horrible things to, to Melanie. Um, and then right shortly after that, why would Melanie give me back? The guy that raped her, beat her, chained her to a toilet, was this horrible guy, controlled finances, did everything. Why would Melanie give me back? I think I got around 25, 30% custody, um, $500,000, half a million dollars, dismiss the temporary restraining order and me being allowed back in our marital house, which I built, or I, I didn't build it from scratch, I redid the whole thing. But anyway, yeah, why? What are you thinking then, when you're on your ass, you've got nothing, you can't see your daughter? Oh, those are the worst kind of accusations, and it's difficult to come back from them, because of once it's out there, it's hard to then, because the, it's always going to be there, if you know what I'm saying, until you then stand at the forefront and go, wait a minute, I'm going to fight back. Because those accusations with such a, a high-profile name as well, especially in the UK, like you say, look, why why would she say all that? Why would she create that then? Look, what was the method behind it? Was it her team doing that? Was it her doing that? Or was her, like you says, the other men she's had kids with, she's sort of done similar? Or it's simple. Melanie went with a game plan with Susan Weisner and Larry Backman. And who are they? They're divorce lawyers in Los Angeles. Who she, and, uh, I think she's in a lawsuit with them. She, Melanie went through like six different lawyers. Um, I had the best lawyer in the entire universe, uh, Grace Jamra, Jamra and Jamra, big shout out to Baz and Michael, family run, I've never had any other lawyer except for them. Uh, but Melanie went through about six or seven different lawyers. And I think that they would, to answer your question, um, when this initially happened, Larry Backman has a plug and play. Like I said, we're going in, I'm gonna call the ATF. 
we're going to allege this, we're going to allege that. And the reason why Larry Backman knows it so well is because Larry Backman was um, in trouble for domestic violence. So he understands the whole process of what you can do with the power of domestic violence put together with you know, his relationship that he has with like the ATF and FBI. You, you have to remember, I was being investigated by ATF, FBI, local police, district attorney, and they, not, they did not find one, one allegation of abuse in 10 years. So the, the, to answer your question, um, I think Melanie got roped into it with, with the, the lawyers and then she was pot committed. And once you're pot committed, you gotta go, I mean, she had to go run with it. And then all of a sudden, excuse me, um, when it came time to, for, for trial, Melanie dismissed all the allegations. You have to remember, Melanie Brown dismissed, the face of women's aid dismissed all of the allegations. And then Melanie alleged a lot of things. Melanie alleged that I had gotten the nanny pregnant and that I was stealing money and funding the nanny's lifestyle and a bunch of other things. And the nanny at the time was 18 years old, um, sued Melanie and said, Melanie, you're lying. Not only that, you know, uh, she had pictures of like, where Melanie made her put property of Mel B on her vagina, tattoo it and stuff. She had a lot of damning evidence that was she had, all the text messages, all these things. And Melanie did this thing called a slap motion in the U US. It's kind of when you wanna knock something down. And um, it was denied. Then she, they said, you, you have to go to trial on this, Miss Brown. Uh, she then appealed that. Then she lost that appeal. It went all the way up to the, the Supreme Court, which is pretty big. And the Supreme Court said, Miss Brown, we're curious to know, we, there's something to be heard here. And Melanie immediately the next day paid the girl $2 million to be quiet. Why, why, why did, no one ever asked these questions. Melanie, why did you pay the girl $2 million without going to court? Melanie, why did you dismiss all of the allegations with Stefan? If he beat you and raped you, why would you allow him? I had zero custody. Remember, I had zero custody of my daughter. Melanie dismissing all that stuff allowed me to get 30% of, uh, to be able to see my daughter, who was a young child and a female at that. Why, why wouldn't a mother, I wouldn't do that. You'd have to kill me. I'd have to be off this earth in order, if you did something horrible to me, to re relinquish my daughter to you. Um, then as time went on, Melanie had to figure out what it was. So she'd look at a situation and say like, oh, there's a picture. You, you have to think of this. Melanie would say, there's a picture of, um, of me going to the hospital and I have bruises on me. I went to court and I tried to fight for her to show her hospital records. She wouldn't do it. You can't, I couldn't get past HEPA law. I spent a bunch of money trying to do it to have Melanie show the things that she said. Melanie's really good at walking in a room and she's very convincing. And she says, I've got the, 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 the records right here and, and, and the police were called and this and that. And, and people go, oh my God, it's horrible. And it is because she's telling a story from a real survivor of domestic violence, but she's not. She's now heard enough stories and she's putting this together and she's saying things, but she's not, um, it's not real. It never happened. So that's why in her book, I don't know if you've read her new book. It doesn't say I beat her every day. What happened to the daily beatings? Now it more, she morphed it more into like, I was mentally abusive and I was like controlling, uh, I controlled finances and I did this and that. But Mel, if I controlled finances, how did Melanie empty our bank, joint bank accounts? She emptied our company joint bank accounts. I didn't have that power. Melanie doesn't realize that there's 10,000 emails of Melanie overseas, wherever she was from her iPhone, giving direction on finances that had nothing to do with me. Uh, there's, she said that I kept her from her parents. There's 10,000 emails of her and her parents corresponding directly. There's everything that Melanie said, no one's ever seen it in the court of law because Melanie dismissed all the allegations. Yeah. So like I say, I'm not asked what people do in their private time, free sums, orgies, whatever they want to do. It's, yeah. it's, it's down to anybody what they want to do in their private time. But it's the accusations of the rape and getting forced to have free sums and it getting recorded. Yeah. Like that's nasty. That's bad. That's um and it's sad because the allegations 
the papers print them against but, men. But it doesn't exist. Though. Yeah, I know, but against men, but like, there should be more protection for men in my own eyes because how can they print defamation complaints and all the accusations? No, because you've never been charged, have you? Never. No convictions with it with Mel. Never. No, nothing. No police. Nothing. I. It, it, there's nothing. There's nothing there. There's ten years. Mel will do things like this. Let me give you an example. I'm telling you, it's 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 the perfect thing. She now looks back through everything. So there's a there's she has a picture of of what you'd call like a, a swollen undering of the lip or whatever. I'm sure people have seen her or whatever. Melanie will go back and go. That was proof that I was hit. Well, let's think about this. The person that took that picture first of all was a mutual friend of ours, right? So it's a mutual friend. Uh, why would, if you're being, being beaten and you are taking this as your evidence, why would you go to a mutual friend? That doesn't make sense. And if that's the case, where are all the other beatings? So if you were, this is four years prior to, or five years prior to us divorcing, or maybe four years or something. If you're taking, if you're logging in, let's say you start logging in, where's your, where's the other logins at? Where, like, why didn't you? So what she does is she'll look at something. And the reason why she had that picture is because a mutual friend took it was because she was getting a, a um, what fellow? No, no, no. She was having an allergic reaction and she got a shot that day. And then the next day, that same day it went down, right? Uh, it wasn't a, a beating, but when you look back at it, Melanie can look back at anything, anywhere and go, that was, that was the reason, but it doesn't make sense. Let me, let me give you an example. Melanie said that I got, I went crazy because she, did um, a, a shoot with with Usher. Now, mind you, the fact that Melanie's been around a million and one celebrities, our whole relationship, but she said, I had a problem with this. Okay. And she said that I beat her and I split her lip. Well, first of all, there is no split lip picture that exists. She has a, um, uh, it's like a swollen lip on one little side right here underneath. And the only reason why I'm focusing on this is because there's no other proof. So I'm going with this, this thing. So if people believe, and I'm sure they could, you know what? You got jealous, you flew off in a rage, and you hit her in the lip. That's a plausible thing. But if I'm going to beat my ex-wife because she was on a television show, which she's been on a show with every other celebrity throughout our marriage, and she's been around... I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times she's on a panel around with people and I have nothing against Usher by far, but let's just say people believe her. She, there was no monster. There was no, 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 no beatings. There was no craziness. Mel, if you look at her Instagram or you look back at anything, Mel would do whatever she wanted to do. Does anyone understand why she's called Scary Spice? <laughs> like, like Mel is not a chump. She's not a pushover. It doesn't even suit well when she's going, and then I didn't know, and I didn't even know what abuse was until I learned about it later. And what, like, uh, uh, huh? A has anyone seen her deposition? Well, her deposition will be aired. And just take a look at her deposition. She doesn't, I mean, it's, I don't know. I've, I've buried it. I've buried all the abuse. I don't remember when it is. And that, like, wh like, where is this fabrication all made up from? I mean, literally, the ATF, FBI, local police, district attorney, all investigated me. They didn't find one, not one, in 10 years. And we have 10 years of our text messages. Does Melanie not think that when people read these in court, they've never got to see all this stuff? But Melanie talks to me, not as a, uh, w w like this is... Shut up, you you fat fuck, you this, you that. Like, what? You're like, huh? You call me a fat fuck and a loser and I'm disgusting with lupus and this. And, but, but And you're scared of me? Like, it doesn't make any sense. But when people see it, they, they I, the, the problem is I, I got a comment from a girl and she was saying, you know, we're, 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 we're rolling with Mel B. We're behind Mel B. We're with Mel B. And I was thinking, Mel wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. Like, You'd be on fire and she'd be walking by and she'd have to use the restroom. She wouldn't even piss. Like literally you're fighting for a person who doesn't even know you exist and you hate me without looking at the evidence. I'm not saying take my side either, but I, there's been definitely a, um, uh, in the UK, especially um, where the media uh, just is super focused on, uh, you know, 
to give you an example, uh, what's his name? Pierce Morgan. I was talking to his producers and they said to me, we can't make Melanie out to be a liar. And I said, but, but, but what if she is lying? Well, we, we can't because, you know, because she's representing victims and this and that or whatever. So Melanie's really bunkered herself down like a tick into that domestic world to protect herself because now she has an MBE and she's really, and you got to think of this, Melanie is living a fake victims. Like th this is like the most craziest thing I've ever thought of in my life. She's literally living a person's life that has been beaten and and, 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 and 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 all these horrible things have happened. She's literally saying, this is what happened to me when it didn't happen and getting all of the praise and everything for it. And what Melanie's doing is actually good. Let me explain. She's actually bringing awareness, which is a good thing to domestic violence, but she's doing it by lying about what happened. So it's like somebody who is raising money for veterans and they're doing a great thing to raise money for veterans, but they were never in the war. Like it's, 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 a, it's a crazy thing. And then a place like Women's Aid, who um, when I called them, I tried to explain, they just hung up and said, we don't care, get, get away. And the reason why is Women's Aid should be super happy because they have a person like Mel who has a complete vendetta to like bury me and on top of it to receive more empathy and more sympathy or whatever. Um, so she's just running around my ex-husband, my ex-husband, my ex-husband. Don't you think that Melanie could have gotten the same point across to millions of people about domestic violence without constantly mentioning her ex-husband or no, I'm, I'm it's just a question. No, nah, probably not. Yeah. So, so she mentions me to make sure that it goes bigger. It's, it's this, it's that. And not because I'm bigger. It's because, you know, she, this, this, this story that she keeps telling everyone, she wants it to be real, but we had, we had cell phones, we have text messages, we have emails. M Melanie was in other countries sometimes for two or three months with the kids by herself, partying on yachts and doing all these things. I couldn't even get to the country. She was in Australia one time, I think for like three months. And I, I couldn't get into Australia because there was a problem with my visa, not because I did anything. It got corrected and I was allowed in, but I wasn't there for like three months. Melanie was partying, hanging out, going on yachts. To, she had cell phones next to her. The kids were all there with her, so she had no no chance for me to do anything. Uh, so she partied and hung out and kicked it and chilled. And then she told people, I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have a computer. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a credit card. Does Melanie not understand that we have the credit card receipts with pictures of her name on it, of her emails saying, hey, my card's not working at the hair place. Make sure you get it working to the accountant. Does Melanie doesn't, I, I, maybe I don't know. I don't understand. Like, What about the bruises and the scratches? I think it was America's Got Talent. She said she had to take a night off and you were banned from ever being there because I, of the I was I, Just to be very clear, I was never banned from America's Got Talent, never in my life. I don't know where she got that from, but I'm sure we can depose and bring people to go. I, I, I've been to America's Got Talent myself, probably, if I had to be honest with you, maybe four times, maybe four times. Because obviously there was an article in the press that Simon Cowell had banned you and... Once again, you can Google right now, Simon Cowell, you can hear it out of his own mouth right now, Simon Cowell, he put out a statement verbally out of his own mouth, sonically for people to hear and see. I had no idea they were going through any type of thing in their relationship and he's never ever banned me and I've never had a problem with him. And I wasn't banned, I, I never went around there. I didn't go to her work. I was not a husband that was sitting around. And the, the, the only other thing that she had right here, she tripped and fell. And in all the videos, it's not a, that's a scab. That's not a, that's not a bruise. She didn't have a bruise. She had a scab because she was being drunk. And I have the videos and pictures from that night. We were all out having fun. She tripped on her heels. And then, like I said, years later, when she needs to make a thing of abuse, what does she do? She looks and says, oh, that's when he hit me. That's when he did this. That's why these, uh, um, uh, what is it like, um, I, I, we were in Prague, we were in Prague and she fell. 
So now all of a sudden I beat her then. But if I beat her then, why didn't she take a video or a picture of it? Or why isn't there text messages? In all of our 10 years, how come there's only text messages of me saying, you're a drug addict, you need to stop doing coke, you're screwing up the family, why are you doing this, you're drinking too much, you gotta stop doing this, that, whatever. How come Melanie not one time with calling me all these names, telling me to screw off, telling me the horriblest things, how come she never once said, you hit me? Or why are you so abusive? Did she ever hit you? No, she didn't, she wasn't, she hurt herself. And all the videos you're gonna see that are gonna be in court is Melanie drunk in the middle of the day walking into walls and falling down on her face or peeing in the front room. This is an alcohol I gave her. I'm not, this isn't like a um, gaslighting where you go, hey, let's go out and go party. You have drinks and then you come home and then you bash the person. Oh, you're drunk, you're no good, you're this or that. This is me in the middle of the day, 12 p.m. She comes in from taking our daughter to a job interview. So she's leaving, take our daughter, job interview. While our daughter's having the job interview, she pounds six shots of vodka at 12 in the day and can't even come back into the house and walking down the stairs, running at me, um, uh, uh, falling into walls, smacking her face on walls. And people said, well, why'd you take videos of this stuff? Mel B, look at the situation I'm in right now. If I didn't have any of these videos, and the reason why is because at the time I was showing our therapist. so. Melanie and I had a therapist, one of the most renowned therapists in the world, um, according to uh, Dr. Phil. He's on the Dr. Phil show all the time and other shows. Um, and we had, um, uh, uh, she had her own text messages directly with him. I had mine with him. And we also had joint text messages in a joint group for us. And as I'm telling Dr. Sophie all the time about her drugs and her drinking and all the craziness and this and that, Melanie would deny it and say, no, you're lying. So I had to take videos to send it to Dr. Sophie because no one believes you. When a celebrity says something, no one believes you. So I only had things, and by the way, these aren't hidden videos. This isn't a video that I put, this is right here like this, Melanie, I'm sending this to the doctor. You are wasted out of your brain right now. What are you doing? Why are you drinking in the middle of the day? Why are you doing cocaine? I have videos where she's doing cocaine around our young daughter and I'm like, what are you doing? You're ruining this fucking marriage. So why didn't Melanie at any of these times say, but you hit me or you're abusive or you're a piece of shit. Melanie wasn't shy. She wasn't some downtrodden, like shy person. When you see her messages or you see how she talks to me in the camera, oh, fuck off, fuck yourself. <laughs> that's Mel B. She's they, they, like, I don't understand where people thought that Scary Spice went into this little shell and was like, oh. So anyway, you know, now, now after Melanie's gotten a chance to kind of look at everything, she can pick, cherry pick what she wants to try to explain that she was beaten. If you really remember in the first thing, when Melanie was doing X Factor, Melanie said that I ha I was slamming her head in the door to the point, this is this is real, that I'm slamming her head into the door to the point where she thought I was gonna kill her. Um, I locked her in a room, I did all these things, she was bruised, she went to the hospital. How come she's never once, right now, all she has to do is show her hospital records. Everyone on the internet says, we've seen the bruises, Melanie was bruised in X Factor, she had bruises. Why doesn't Melanie just take the records and go, here's my, hospital records, not my blood type, not if I have any underlying things. Here's what the report says from there. There was bruises on her face, bruises on her arm. Bru there was no bruises. Melanie was having a drug, she, had, she went to the hospital for a drug overdose. That had nothing to do with me. I didn't put the drugs in her body, but Melanie won't take accountability at all. It just seems all a bit far-fetched. Why so extreme if it's all false accusations that like you're the father to a daughter? Like why try and destroy you? Because it has. It mentally, it must physically, spiritually destroy you with those accusations. Like, it's not small accusations. You have had an argument or a fight. Like why go so extreme? But why not? You're, you're, you're Mel. Why not do a parentectomy? It's like a vasectomy of parents. I mean, she doesn't have... She did it first with Jimmy, then she did it with Eddie. She did it with myself. Once you're not with Mel, l let me give you an example. If I can put this up on, on your podcast or whatever, I'd love to play um, uh, um, something for you to hear of Melanie. So let me give you uh, some 
reference. So Melanie has a person that's working for her after our divorce. This is post our divorce um, uh, or, or separation or whatever. Anyway, so uh, this person uh, is a friend of Melanie's, but has been working for Melanie in the sense of like childcare nanny, watching, watching our, my daughter and her, my stepdaughters. Melanie gets mad at the guy and calls a bunch of people. Now, there's another assistant that is there that's filming this in her face. It's not a hidden camera once again. Um, it was given to me and also given over to our lawyers and to the court. Um, Melanie is mad at this person and she's telling everyone around in her circle, you work for me. You don't talk to this person. This person's bad. Don't communicate with him. I pay you, you listen to me, do this, do that. And the girl at, is like, she can't believe it. She's the other nanny. She's like, no, not, not, not Rusty. He's like such a good guy. And she goes, you think he's a great person? He fucked a child in the ass and I'm working with the police and I'm working. She says she's working with the police and the, and the, and the lawyers and this and that, and that he's fucked her child in the ass. That's her exact words where's the police report? Where did she work with the lawyers? Melanie said that to ruin that person because she got mad at him. So why is it so far-fetched from the world for her, if she can blame someone for raping a child? Yeah. I mean, you gotta hear it. So if you're, so, 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 so if you're, if you're saying that you're making up a lie that someone raped your child, and say, you think it's gonna be fucks a child in the ass? These are her words, not mine. So I, I don't understand like how far-fetched it is for her to say the things that she has said about me. And the truth is, there was no police report. The truth is that person definitely, 100 million percent, didn't do that. Um, it was something that Melanie came up with on the spot because the other person said, I just don't, he doesn't seem like a bad person. Why are you kicking him to the curb or this, that, whatever? So she came up with something right on the spot. Now, obviously she never went to the police. She never had a investigation. There was never any lawyers called or anything. It's all lies. Yeah, that's dark stuff, but... What about the our drug intake and our alcohol? You said she was struggling with drinking drugs. Was it every day? Yes, it was every day. It was when Melanie Melanie's not like a bad person, but the but the the the, the drug version, the drunk version, the that version of Melanie is a whole different person. And the problem is, is that Melanie thought that I was being controlling with her. When I would tell her don't drink or don't do drugs, that's controlling to Melanie. If you stop the party, you're controlling. Yeah, deflection. I mean, it sucks. I mean, we, listen, you said you had a problem with drinking and drugs yeah. before. I, I, we, I think we've all gone through our little things. If I took that away from you, did you were you my friend or were you 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 wouldn't like me, would you? At the time, you'd probably think fuck off. Exactly. But after, if you come through the other side, uh, of course, you more appreciate it then. Of course, but not at the time. Yeah. So at the time when it was, you know, not to do this, it was like, oh, he's he's this, and guess what happens? Then the cling ones come around, and they love to have fun with Mel B because then they take a picture. I was hanging with a Spice Girl last night. Oh, I'll give you some coke. I'll do this. I'll do that. People don't understand that celebrity to regular people that have never been around a celebrity is like, I, I'm pretty sure if you're a celebrity and you're a big enough celebrity as Mel was or is, you could convince a fan easily to kill someone for you. So it's not that hard to have them believe whatever you say without even showing or saying, showing any proof or anything. Was she cheating on you? Um, Having affairs? Well, obviously, I mean, she was with Tamara Son. Look up the video. I mean, she was with multiple different people. I mean, that's another thing. And it's not even about the cheating part. It's about Mel being honest, right? So one of our biggest problems in the world is Mel will lie on top of a lie on top of a lie. As she's doing now, to give you an example, Melanie has told the whole world, after Stefan, I couldn't even be around a man. I couldn't even like, I didn't even know how to be around a man. I have all the text messages from her assistant that are right after me 
of Melanie saying, oh, I just fucked this guy. He busted two nuts on my stomach. I'm waiting on this other guy. I want to fuck this guy. That Why not be honest? Why lie to all your fans and say you couldn't be with another man? Because it makes me look bad and it makes her look like she was so fractured. But everything was a lie. I, that's why I want to go to court. I want to be able to bring this out for a judge, a jury, and people to see that, you know, the things Melanie was saying were just co complete lies. I mean, I, I don't know. She lied about everything. Why didn't you leave her after the cheating? This may sound kind of crazy or whatever. I didn't. We both were living, you know. Open relationships? Uh, I don't want to say an open relationship, but we definitely were, you know. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily we sat down and had this conversation or whatever, but you know, her and I were hooking up with chicks and there were, you know, it, it was, it wasn't your standard marriage. You know, you have to understand when I came in, Melanie wanted to have a girlfriend from the get go. Melanie's always been bisexual. And like I said, she was dating this girl, Christine prior to me. And it was something that I was okay with. I didn't know that she wanted to go hook up with guys. That was kind of a surprise because everything with Mel was very anti-guy. It was more, more lesbian. So you would allow her to hook up with girls, but not guys? I, she told me in advance. It wasn't something she sprung on me. It was something that she wanted. So, um, I, but she definitely was anti-guy. So when that happened, it did surprise me some, but at the end of the day, I think, um, you know, it wasn't like she was doing it every day either. You know what I mean? Um, we got past it. We got past it. It wasn't like a, a love affair. I think, you know, listen, this may sound a little weird or whatever. I, I probably would have been not able to get past it if she were mentally, I felt she was mentally texting a guy or in love with a guy mentally and not physically. Yeah, no, like I say, nobody's asked about what people do in their private lives. The majority of men would be happy for their girlfriends or wives to be have another girlfriend people wouldn't accept that the man thing people wouldn't accept for me it's just yeah if you love someone you love someone everybody's different um but if men are honest they would it's probably their fetishes to see other women their partner with other women having threesomes it's not it's not the that's not bad it's not nobody's asked about that it's the accusations it's the, no 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 the i mean here's a, but here's where this all gets weird so let's see, let, let me give you an example so with the hookup of women right so but people haven't seen these videos and they'll say the, 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 so let me just be very, very clear. I don't have any sexual videos that the world's gonna go see with Melanie. I wanna clear that up right, right there because Melanie made the world feel that I have these um, videos of her, these sex tapes and this, that or whatever. They don't exist, it's a lie, right? There is one tape, uh, not even a tape, let me not say tape, there's a clip of Melanie, fully dressed, by the way, fully dressed, no nudity whatsoever. There are no sexual nudity things that were with Mel. I am actually, um, Melanie wanted me to hook up with a girl to satisfy her and videoed it. And during the video, and she turns the camera to herself and goes, I like it, and then turns it back. And that's something that Melanie requested of me. So for Melanie to say that we were having these, you know, where I was forcing her into threesomes and stuff or whatever, it's like it's that's what i'm saying everything was a lie everything so what about the nanny when she said you got a nanny pregnant you paid 300 grand to then have an abortion yeah she paid her two million dollars no but she said court. you paid 300 grand to for her to get an abortion yeah of course so that was a lie of course that's why she paid her two million dollars because so that's the reason why she paid her two million i know he says that of the course start, but yeah just... so yeah the nanny had the text messages so what happened was the nanny got pregnant on her own it has nothing to do with me and she went to melanie and confided in melanie remember girl power she's all about women so she confided in melanie and melanie uh actually paid for her abortion put her in a hotel they have all their text messages that have nothing to do with me. And then after the divorce, Melanie came to the girl and said, hey, are you down with me or else, you know, it's not gonna be good or whatever. And then when the girl said, I'm not down with Stefan or you, I'm down with what's doing right for the kids, Melanie literally tried to bury her. Oh, he stole this money uh, to, to pay her these money, these side monies. He had sex with her, he got her pregnant. And the girl said, listen, I'm getting lawyers and I'm going to sue you. Prove that.
because I have all the proof that you know exactly who got me pregnant. You helped me. This was something that really was hard for me to do. You are using something that was like, that's tearing me up right now to lie, to try to make me look like a bad person with your ex-husband. And Melanie paid $2 million. I mean, would you pay $2 million? I'm not paying no one $2 million at all. Uh, th th no, we're going to court. So what happened with the court case, the divorce? The divorce. What was the outcome? The, she dismissed it. So everything she says was dismissed. What happened with um, properties and the kids and what ha everything? What was the whole outcome? Yeah, she dismissed everything. So we just split what we had and paid off taxes and whatever and kept whatever was left. But what you're thinking then with all the rape allegations and getting the nannies pregnant and the beatings and you're barred from... You've got like kind of restrictions against her. You're bad from X Factor. Like it doesn't look good. But obviously, listen to your story. You sound legit, and by all means, I would never shoot down a survivor or someone who's saying that because she could be telling the truth. But but obviously, you're say, you're telling your side. Things just don't add up. It just seems all Buddy, messy. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. This is the number one thing. If someone listens to this, Melanie says, as a domestic violence survivor, you don't need proof. And she's correct. It is the most correct thing she's ever said. But, there's a big but, you don't need an overwhelming amount of evidence that you lied. And the problem is, is that I told you there's a recording of Melanie talking about the nanny that had anally raped our child or whatever. There's also, Melanie went to another girl and tried to get her to lie to say that I tried to rape her and the girl gave testimony that Melanie called and threatened her a little bit. The other girl, our mutual friend that took the photo of Melanie, Melanie had called her at a certain point and said, I have pictures or information that you and my husband have hooked up or whatever. And the girl's married. She's a friend, she's married. And kind of told her like, where she recorded it, hey, you can you say that Stefan stole a lot of your Birkin bags and did this and did that? And the girl said, no and hung up on her. Why do we have all these recordings and all these different people of Melanie going to them to make them make up lies? That's the problem. If you're a person, you really went through domestic violence and you don't have anything, you don't have pictures of the busted lips, you don't have text messages, you don't have anything, you should be at least believed to a certain point. But if you have an overwhelming amount of evidence that shows that you're lying about all the other things, then, then how do you believe what you say happened? Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, Melanie has an overwhelming amount of evidence that shows that she lied. Does she have mental health issues? I mean, I'm not a therapist, but I mean, you know, from all the pills and everything that Melanie's taken or whatever, I just know it's not good for for anybody. Yeah, it's sad, that you? A lot of the 90s girls and kind of boy bands and girl bands, a lot of people, and because when you were famous back then, you were famous and, uh, a lot of them do seem to struggle later on in life. And I'm not saying everybody, I can't speak yeah. for everyone, but what you see in the press, what was your mum and your family members and friends saying to it? Um, I mean, they had their own little things. I mean, her mother and her father and, yeah, I mean, I, I have all the text messages and emails, not all the text messages, but there's a lot of emails that were going back and forth or whatever. Um, you know, listen, when it comes to her sister and her mother and this and that, and I don't want to even sound bad, I think that at a certain point, they got fed up with Melanie. Um, Melanie wasn't around any longer. And they, they they didn't have the caveats. Like, you know, they weren't like, you know, um, they didn't... They, they, they didn't have like the, the uh, when Melanie moved to America and she wasn't around them all the time, I think they got very honest with her and they were very direct with her through a lot of their communications. I think once Melanie moved back, it's very hard for someone like her mother who's known as Mel B's mom in her town or whatever, it makes more sense for her to turn a cheek and her sister to turn a cheek, you know, cause her sister is like the young sister. She looks like Mel, she's kind of been in her shadow. So it's like, it's it's very hard for um, for them to not turn the other cheek now and be completely different and be like, we love you and oh my God and this and that, but that's not the truth of what was happening. What did your then. mom say? I mean, obviously she knew they were just like nothing but lies. So she was supporting you? Of course. 
So after the divorce then, are you thinking, okay, you can go on with your life, you're starting to get custody of your daughter, flip the chapter, move on? I'm thinking that the whole time. Every day I'm thinking, okay, at a certain point, she's gonna stop making up lies or making a book. And you gotta remember, she's making money from this. It's not like she's just doing it and she's helping someone. She's making a lot of money. She's booking interviews. She's a now speaking person. She gets paid 30, 40,000, whatever the amount is. She's got two books out. She's doing this, doing that. And it's, she's, she's lining her pockets. So, is that what it all comes down to? The attention and the money that comes with sticking I, to that story? I, I, I'm gonna be honest. Listen, Mel is a, is a, has a big name. If Mel were to just talk about domestic violence in general, she could still get her point across. But she's, I think Mel's actually putting women, women's lives in jeopardy. I think in a very bad way. And I'm gonna tell you why. For somebody who's never really went through the things that she's talking about, like a psycho guy who would chain you up, beat you, force you into things, uh, control all your finances, do this, that, or whatever. You'd have to be completely uh, like a like a like a serial, um, like a obsessive like maniac, right, to do all this stuff. Well, what Melanie's showing people and telling women that have come from these real horrible domestic violence uh, things, she's putting their lives in danger because she's giving them advice or showing them things that probably isn't the smartest thing to do. If there is a guy that's that psycho and crazy and nuts or whatever, um, rubbing stuff in his face publicly all the time might not be the smartest thing to do with any person. But Melanie's telling people and showing people a way that she never had any abuse. So she's giving bad advice and that bad advice could actually hurt somebody who is really dealing with somebody who's psycho and crazy. Was she ever suicidal? Because she not say she was in the hospital suicidal or something at one point? I, I, I think through Melanie's life, if something, um, it's like an attention grabber, I think in a sense. I, I, I don't know. Usually, and I, and, I, and I say that like in a, in a way, and let me explain what I mean by that. Um, because, you know, when someone tries to take their life, that's really serious, you know? Um, but if you're talking about it and you're not getting help, and you're not looking to really um, you know, figure out the underlying problem, to me, it kind of makes me think like, well, why are you talking about it? You know what I mean? Like it's, for me, if, if I'm gonna tell you that, you know, I, I can't say I never not wanted to end my life. I, I think everyone may be at a certain point in your life or maybe they haven't have had that type of thought. You either go get help for it you try to figure out a way to, or what's going on, but you just don't keep bringing it up to people and make it kind of like your conversation that uh, you know everyone's gonna come in, oh, are you okay, are you okay? You know, I don't know. So when she, when did she release the book? What year? Was that absolutely honest or something? Brutally honest? Yeah, I think maybe four years ago, three years ago. Something. So what you think in end, was there any more telltale signs of, was the, how was it press and articles after the divorce? Were they still going heavy on you? The, the articles are only coming from Melanie. Melanie is making all this. So this is where people are going, why are you suing her, Stefan? Why? You, you, you're, you're trying to line your pockets? Well, first of all, I've stated to everyone in the entire world that all the proceeds, minus legal costs, are going to women's charities for domestic violence in the US and UK. 100% of it, okay? So I don't get a dollar. And to give anyone an understanding that doesn't know, when you sue someone, it costs me a lot of money to go pursue Melanie. So I have to come out of pocket with a lot of money to get lawyers, to put all this stuff together, to go after Melanie. Um, and then if I, I do, if I'm successful in what I'm doing, um, the money that comes in is going directly out to women's uh, domestic violence uh, shelters in the US and UK. So I'm not doing it for money, I'm doing it because I've allowed Melanie, or not allowed, I haven't gone and cleared my name. People really think that, and she's making up anything as she goes along. I mean, it's at this point, it's just she's making up anything in the world. I, I, I walked out of the house with $700. I have her, uh, um, uh, which people can go look up, her uh, uh, lease to the, I think it was $18,000 a month place that she moved into immediately. 
what person in regular life, these people that are out here going, we're Team Mel, you can afford an $18,000 a month place after you tell the world that you're, you left out of the house with $400 in your pocket and you, I, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by. How hard has this been on your daughter? Like kind of mom and dad going toe to toe now? Um, I kind of keep her out of, out of this. I mean, she's not, she's, she's a young kid. She's on the internet, but um, she has a really good life. She's doing really well in life and she has a good group of friends and family and stuff or whatever. And I don't, I don't bash her mom to her. I don't talk negative about her mom. I never have. It, she doesn't really feel that negativity from me. Mm -hmm. What's Mel saying since you've tried to put a five million pound defamation complaint in? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, uh, waiting to hear. And how is that? Because she's on chat shows just a few months ago, still staying the same things because did she not release the book again, but adding more stuff to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the seven years later. I, I, she's she's constantly doing the seven year. I mean, it's just it's it's, yeah. I mean, we'll see in court. So why has it took you so long to come forward? No, I told you I wanted to focus on getting the daughter. Yeah, but of course, now did you, was that just all okay? Wait, 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 because that's a lot to then be getting. Because if you everything you're saying is correct, that's a witch hunt against someone to make someone be the it, victim. And I can't discredit her because there is survivors out there and there's amazing women who do that sort of stuff. I've um, got to be open-minded, but like I say, you, you seem to have a lot of evidence and you seem to be genuine. I don't know, but yeah. um, I've got to stay open-minded and I've still got to say, well, she could be right with something. So um, the whole- Yeah, I'm not trying, listen, by the way, I don't want to come on here and be like, she was a drug addict, she drank, I'm a piece, I'm like this good guy and, and it's Bash Mel. That's not it. Every relationship, you have arguments. Fuck you, fuck you. This, I didn't beat her. I didn't control finances. I didn't, I, I, Melanie could use her card. She could empty, Melanie emptied all of our joint money out of our accounts at the end of our marriage. I couldn't do that. So if I have control, how come Melanie can do something that I can't do? Like th there's a million different things. So it's not that Melanie was this bad person. Melanie's a great person. Melanie's uh, a very funny person. There's a lot of amazing things about Melanie. What Melanie's doing with this lie and trying to line her pockets or make this her new thing. You know, we, ha we, we don't communicate or haven't talked in seven years. Melanie, in our personal communications, I mean, not... We don't we don't communicate directly. We create we connect through an app called uh, Family Wizard, right? So um, and we don't, it's not voice messages; it's just text messages. But in the bottom of Melanie's messages, Melanie Brown, MBE. I mean, do you understand? Like for a woman that was supposedly beaten and tortured, and I'm this horrible guy, and I'm crazy, and she doesn't even know how dangerous I am. Why would Melanie? want to it's like she's throwing it in my face because that's what she wants to do this is all like a big uh, uh i don't know like a big uh a fun thing for her i think i think she gets off on it a little bit i'm gonna she told me early on before we got divorced i'm gonna ruin your life and i feel like she's really living up to that uh that promise that she made when was your darkest moment with it oh I, I in the beginning i just imagine imagine you and i i've just met you just now and i leave here and i go tell the world that i just had i've been on your podcast and when uh we breaked you offered me some coke and some girls came out of the back room or something and you'd go that's believable <laughs> no, but, no, just, no, no 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 but but for you and then everyone comes ago, down yeah. on, but everyone comes down on you and you go but but that never happened yeah that's a hard one when it never happened do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She should have just kept it real and said, listen, our, 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 our marriage fell apart. Um, it, it wasn't working because of this, 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 and just kept it real. I, I, I'm telling you, she let Larry Backman and Susan Weisner, I think, put her in a predicament or allowed them because um, that's what Larry Backman and Susan Weisner do. It's like their regular MO. They go in and say, this person's been abusive, this, um, uh, you know, this, this, this. And then to give you an example, I do want to address on this one thing because um, Melanie's big thing was is that Stefan was done in for domestic violence prior to me, right? Um, so let's address that. Uh, there was a girl that I was dating for five years. 
um, four or five years and alleged, she, she says it in her own self, it's not alleged, this is fact. She's saying one time, one time, we got into an argument. Now, what she's, let me try to explain this. So she meets Melanie and there's a saying, an enemy of yours is a friend of mine. So as this divorce is happening, this ex, I don't talk to her. We haven't been together in a long time. Melanie gets in touch with her and says, hey, Nicole, her name is Nicole Contreras. Nicole, hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? I, I, yo, we should definitely get together. Like, yo, oh my God, it gets in her brain. And, and Nicole has always wanted to be famous or always wanted to be somewhat whatever. She's been on a couple of reality shows. It's her big thing. And now here's Mel B like being her best buddy. So she goes to her and Nicole takes the bait and comes out and says, uh, one time when we were in a fight or whatever, Stefan came home drunk, pinned me against the wall with his arm, and I was fearful for my life because I couldn't breathe. Okay? That sounds pretty horrible. It is horrible. It doesn't sound. It is horrible. In reality, what happened, which is part of the police report that's on and part of my case, because Melanie used that to tell people that I beat her and I did all these horrible things where I almost like killed her. And here's the reality. The reality happened was I came home, we were together four or five years, four and a half years. Um, this happened one time, no excuses. And this is me taking direct responsibility. Um, we got into an argument about both of us cheating. I grabbed her phone, I took her phone, and this is the police report. This is what she said. I said the police report, it's all confirmed. I throw the phone on the ground. Um, she's trying to scratch me. I grab her arm and I push her back and that's what happened. But that, and, and by the way, I admitted, I admitted to, um, uh, I, I pled no contest. I admitted that I'd done it, done it. I didn't lie and say this or that or whatever. And I, it was the truth. I grabbed her arm, she scratched me, and I threw her phone. Uh, I got vandalism because I threw her phone. And I'm not trying to minimalize that at all. But I am saying that things like that can happen but once again, you don't have to lie and say the person put their arm on your throat and you could barely breathe and you feared for your life. And that's the type of things that Melanie took that and used it in her book. So if you read her book, she says that I admitted to beating um, Nicole. Well, I didn't admit to beating her. I admitted to grabbing her arm and pushing her back as she was clawing on me, which was in the police report. But she, the way that Melanie has worded things or worked with Louise Gannon, excuse me, <clears throat> who has written the book, to give you an example, there's a big article that Louise Gannon, who wrote Melanie's book, wrote about me. And in that article, she put a picture of Melanie's face bruised and battered, which was something that Melanie had done two years prior, I mean, two years after post our divorce, where she did um, a domestic violence video. The way Louise Gannon wrote the article and put the picture of Melanie's face looking bruised and battered led people to believe that I had beaten her face and this was an evidence picture. She did not mention that it was a picture two years post our divorce. She didn't mention it was Hollywood makeup. She didn't mention any of this stuff. And Louise Gannon did that, why? because Louise Gannon wanted to sell more books for Mel B because Louise Gannon gets a cut of the pie too. So if you start looking at everything across the board, you start realizing that, you know- um, It's all business. It's business. It's business as usual. How does that make you feel? Uh, listen, um, I- How the fuck can you be so calm? Uh, I mean, listen, what? maybe I'm too pragmatic. I mean, listen, you could drive yourself into a wormhole and I could get into a part where, you know, where I was probably early on where I didn't want to live. I was mentally not in a good place. Um, I've done a lot of counseling. I've talked to a lot of people. I've talked to a lot of people that have gone through similar things. Um, and I'm, I'm going to fight right now and I'm going to court to prove my, 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 uh, my point that I didn't do any of this and this is all a lie and that I'm innocent of that. That's yeah. how I can be kind of calm. If not, I mean, you, you, you'd find yourself thinking about this stuff as kind of mind wrecking and it keeps going on. Yeah, the thing about domestic violence and stuff, there is, 
The majority of domestic violence is, does come from men, but the majority of false accusations come from women as well. Yeah. And um, not everybody's perfect. You're no saint, you're no angel. Um, nobody is. But to try and get over it, and the rape allegations, anally rape, I mean, sex trafficking, those are some serious fucking accusations. But they don't exist. They were dismissed. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But the majority of people believe it because of what the book says and um, the news articles and the faces with bruises. Because if someone mentions you are male, they'll just see the pictures of bruises and it doesn't yeah. look good. Can you sue the news articles for defamation also? Um, in the UK, my time had went by for suing. Um, was it five years? No, it's like a year or something. In the UK, is very, it? yeah, yeah. That's why I had to sue in America in federal court. Um, yeah, the, the, the laws are quite different here or whatever. Um, and, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought Melanie would stop with the lies at a certain point. I just, I, I, I truly believed it. But she was on Whippet Goldberg just a couple of months ago. Uh, of course, but you, you just keep thinking she's going to stop. She's going to stop. She's going to stop. She's going to stop. And this lie is going on and going on. And you know what? My, my lawyer told me something, once again, Grace Jamra, amazing lawyer, told me something early on. She said, Stefan, you're going to learn patience with this. She wasn't lying about that. And the second thing she said was, Stefan, your ex-wife is... She said, what is the most important thing to you in this? Is it money? Is it this? Is it clearing your name? Is it your daughter? Whatever. And I said, it's my daughter, right? My daughter means more to me than anything in this world, right? So I said, my daughter. She said, Stefan, when Melanie's doing all of her stuff for social media and the court of public opinion, it's going to hurt her when it's time for custody because a judge is looking who's parent centric and who cares the most about the kid. They don't care about you. They don't care that your feelings are hurt. They don't care that you got investigated. They don't care this, they, don't care. they care about the kid and that's what they care about. Show them that you care and show them that you're a real father and that you're a stand up guy and show them that you can, you know, um, do this. And I, I literally, it was so hard, bro. I was, I, 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 could, I couldn't see my daughter. I was, uh, you know, I, I had to go to a place called the Nest Center. I could only see my daughter with a guy that was like a guard that would sit there for that one hour. And I had just lost my stepdaughters. Um, that Angel, I was the only father that she knew. She didn't even know Eddie Murphy was her father. She only knew I was her father. Um, I lost jobs. I lost this. I lost that. And I... I um. Yeah, I mean, it was just my daughter. My daughter meant everything to me at that point. I lost everything. I was pretty much homeless. I, I just wanted my daughter. And when Melanie was doing all this stuff, I decided to do the right thing and really focus on my daughter. And Grace was right. I, I learned patience in a crazy way. And also, I, you know, um, people thought I was guilty because I was quiet. Because I wasn't saying and wasn't screaming to the, the top of my lungs that it's a lie. But even when I'm saying I'm, I'm innocent now, people don't believe me. So my lawyer said, Stefan, they're not gonna believe you now. They're not gonna believe you then. It doesn't matter. It's a catch 22. They want you to come out screaming, she's lying, she's lying, she's lying. I could only do one thing, go to court. And Melanie dismissed all the allegations. I didn't give up anything for that. I didn't give up anything. I got a half a million dollars. I got 30% immediately from my daughter that I couldn't see but for one hour a week in a room, in a five by five room. I got access back into the marital house. I got everything back. I didn't give up anything for that. I, the, the, the temporary restraining order was dismissed. Melanie did that. I, the judge didn't dismiss the case. Melanie dismissed it. Were you ever suicidal yourself? Of course. Is that what it took you to? It took me a lot more than that. Yeah, it was just a bit. It was a dark, dark, dark uh, thing, you know. And now it's what seven years later after the divorce. It's kind of. Do you feel as if it's going to come to a head and kind of you can move on from it, or do you feel as if she'll never stop? Listen, um, I don't know if she'll ever stop, but I think I'll get, I'll get what I need from this court case. You know, this, I, I. I I'm going in there, I'm suing for a reason. 
I didn't, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying I'm the smartest guy in the world, but I'm definitely not that dumb that, you know, things have been kind of, uh, even though they're still out there in the media, you don't go re-dig up something that you know you've done all this horrible stuff, put yourself on front street in front of all the cameras seven years later just to be, you know, to show the world that you beat somebody. It doesn't make sense. I'm doing it because I'm innocent and because I know that I have the evidence and I know that she's made up lies and those lies are easily uncovered. And I, I never got to go to court. I never got a judge and a jury to look at this. How do you think she'll react with this interview? With you being here and saying things from your side? Um, well, I mean, it's very easy. I mean, she's told everybody in the press. So Melanie's thing is very interesting. To, to, how she's going to react is she's going to do the same thing. He doesn't deserve a voice. So Melanie said to Pierce Morgan or said on different interviews that you can look at, he doesn't deserve to have a response. The abuser should never have a response. But what if the abuser is not an abuser? And what if you're just shutting up a person that didn't do anything that you said he has done? And that's the problem. So what Melanie does is there's two ploys. That's number one, to keep me quiet. And the second one is, guys, you know the Spice Girls thing is gonna be happening soon and I got you covered. I'll give you this, that, whatever, access. It's not happening. I'm, I, don't, I don't know their, their things or whatever, but I do know that Melanie has used that a lot with um, really making people feel that if you air something that's not necessarily uh, you know, on par with what I'm pushing out, you're not getting any Spice Girl stuff and I'll cut you off. And people actually um, buy into that. Yeah, everybody deserves a voice to a certain degree, except fucking predators and pedophiles. But um, just with the Johnny Depp stuff, you've kind of got to understand that, listen, there is always three sides of the coin. Um, and the accusations made against him, he lost Pirates of the Caribbean. I think a couple of brands yeah, stuck, yeah, of course stuck by him. So you've got to look at it from all angles. And like I said, I would never discredit a survivor or someone who's out there trying to do the good work. But Women do lie, men do lie, we ain't yeah. fucking saints, we're just as bad as anyone, but yeah. you've got to give people a voice to give a fair shout, especially with the accusations. If there was no charges, if you weren't even, you were investigated, but no charges, never been put to prison or anything, then you've got to give people a chance to have their say. It's only fair because it's uh, it's the kids who are destroyed by it, nobody else. Um, and it's sad the way it goes, because like you say, 10 years of marriage as well, there must have been a lot he's done together have a beautiful daughter together. Yeah. What about Eddie Murphy? Does he see his daughter now or is he still? Um, I mean, Eddie, Eddie, I, you know, I don't, I don't even want to comment on what he's doing with his daughter. You know what I mean? But um, uh, I, I miss Angel. She's such a sweet, amazing person. Um, uh, you know, I, yeah, that was a hard one. You know, one of her last text messages was like, dad, don't leave me or whatever. She was very, such a, is and such a sweet, amazing person. But um, yeah, um, uh, you know, w w one of the things that Melanie does as well, and which I find it really interesting is that, so Melanie will look at this interview and she'll study it with her team and she'll look at everything that I said and she'll come up with 10 plausible answers on what I'm saying. So an example is Melanie right now is signing a, or trying to get people to sign a um, petition for the courts because she's saying that the courts um, don't do a good job when it comes to the uh, the victims or whatever, right? But Melanie's not telling the whole world that she dismissed everything instead of going to court. How can you be mad at the court system when you dismissed everything? What you're hoping for for the outcome would be? I, I listen just for Melanie to stop lying about me. I don't. I, I, I think what Melanie's doing for domestic violence awareness is amazing. I just don't need her lying about, you know lying about me to kind of propel her career in domestic violence awareness yeah like i say man and hope everything works out hopefully you just kind of get a clean slate with it and kind of can move on and rebuild your life yeah like i say i'm not here to discredit mel i don't know the ins and outs of the story but how are you feeling today um i'm just glad that i have some place to talk uh you know to 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 be able to at least tell, tell my side of the story you know what i mean it's not a it's not easy in the UK. In the UK, Melanie is kind of like a, you know, the MBE made her quite, you know, I, I don't know what you want to call it, bulletproof in the sense of where 
you know, no one's asked her to show any evidence. They've just accepted whatever she says. And you're right. Most domestic violence is perpetrated by men, but I'm sure there's a lot of women that lie about men knowing that they have the ability to, to put someone away or ruin them behind domestic violence. For anybody watching that's maybe been through false allegations and try to go over it, what advice would you have for them? I mean, listen, uh, your brain, make sure that you don't go. I was in a very, very bad mental place because of this. Um, really focus on your mental health and try to, you know, search out anybody who will listen or go through the court system. You know what I did? I regret it so bad. I should have never settled. I did because I, I didn't have my daughter. So you got to remember, once again, Melanie had complete control of our daughter. Um, and I didn't, and I wanted my daughter so bad. And like I said, I didn't give up anything to settle. I got everything. So, but what I didn't do was I didn't put, um, uh, um, like, a something like a, like a statement or confidentiality or something or whatever. So Melanie has a bigger platform. Melanie's a celebrity. I'm not. So Melanie saying something, I wasn't thinking of it correctly that, excuse me, it will be amplified a million times more um, than, than myself. But I just want to see my daughter, that's all. What's your plans for the future? Uh, listen, just uh, keep going in life. I'm happy I, I have my daughter. Um, you know, she's an amazing, beautiful child, straight A student, very slick, cool. Um, and yeah, just be a dad and, you know, make sure that she has an amazing run do it way better than my dad ever did it with me and you know focus on my 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 life my mental health and just live life stefan would you like to finish up on anything else um no that's pretty much it just um yeah i mean i just i don't, I don't i'm not looking like i said i'm not looking for anybody to feel sorry for me to think that uh, melanie is a bad person and i'm the good person i just the lies weren't needed. The divorce could have happened. We could have worked everything out amicably like we were planning to. That's in all the text messages, emails. We didn't need to go down this horrible road of lies. For what reason? Stefan, thanks for coming on today and telling yeah. things from your side of the story. I hope um, everything works out in the end. Hopefully things can move forward and these can be great parents. And yeah, I look forward to seeing the outcome of it all. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for the time. Thanks. Yeah, no problem.